than within the undergrowth. And on further observation, perhaps you will see that the chimpanzee is close to the water, for there is a reflection beneath it. Graphical symbols make up the background of the Sierra Leone design, as it does in the current Kenya book. But there has been more advancements lately, and so now we're doing these little technical G-screens made up of tiny icons that I personally draw up every single one. And then I will screen a photograph or a design, and it's made up of multiple security elements, cotton buds, monkeys, little icons from crafts and textiles. This is the level of detail. These are the other visas, the spoonbill, the pygmy hippo, hippo and the flamingo all of which builds into the layer of the design. And of course, their habitat, the forest, the woodland, the swamp, and the coast. It's also designed to dazzle, and we make sure that we want to also look at the narrative of the UV working. And so behind the scenes on this book, hidden in UV, is a further story of the animals themselves in their habitat and the flora and the fauna that they live and dwell in. It's designed to dazzle. Finally, the biodata page. We keep these less is more and simple because the personalization needs to be read well. More and more places and countries are now adopting polycarbonate where you can integrate within several layers security features like Mirage, which is from HID, and Windows, and all sorts of various different portraits can be adapted, MLIs, user-definable screens. But I like to keep the, the design simple so you can read the personalization. In this case of Sierra Leone, a paper version, we've got textile background, but there is a colobus monkey hidden within the background there as well. So it still is included in the narrative. And the biodata page, UV. So thank you for listening. I Thank you very much. In closing... In closing, let's keep communicating together and sowing those seeds. Let's keep collaborating together and discover that the power of design makes an enormous difference in your ID documents and your solutions. And I do hope you'll come and visit me and the team at HID Stand and comment not only on this presentation but on the future Kenya Passport. I hope that I have the privilege of being involved with that and I hope to glean as much information that I can from you all later on today because it will be so fascinating to hear your comments on what you would like to see, what you would like to see, Your Excellency, in your new Kenya passport. Thank you so much for your time. One more round of applause for Colin Howell. Wonderful presentation there, and I can't wait to get home and look at my passport and see what's hidden in the detail. Next, Your Excellency, I would like to call upon the Principal Secretary for Immigration and Citizen Services, Ambassador Professor Julius Bitok, to come and give some remarks. Then after that, he's going to invite the Executive Chair of ID for Africa Movement, Dr. Joseph Atik, to make some remarks as well. Welcome. Your Excellency, Dr. William Samuel Ruto, President and Commander-in-Chief of Kenya Defense Forces, Cabinet uh, Ministers and Cabinet Secretaries present, Principal Secretaries and Permanent Secretaries present, Ambassadors, High Commissioners, Development Partners, Exhibitors, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, good morning. Warm welcome to the official opening of the seventh edition of the ID for Africa conference in Nairobi. This conference is timely because it's coming at a time when Kenya is transiting from second generation ID to third generation ID, the digital identity or unique personal identifier. We are consolidating our databases from CRS, from NRB, from immigration, from IPRS, into one towards the journey towards digital identity. The digital identity is a critical infrastructure that can transform a nation and forms really the basis for social economic transformation, which is at the heart 
of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. IPRS is being upgraded to be able to support the 5,000 services which have been onboarded onto e-citizen platform. This conference, therefore, is really coming at a very, very important time to us because once the 5,000 services are onboarded, then it will be more efficient, it will be more effective for Kenyan citizens to be able to get services more seamlessly. And also, it will help us be able to collect more taxes. Allow me, Excellency, to introduce the number of principal secretaries who are, who are present here today. And uh, I will allow me to read their names. The first one is called Mbatso Zambo, the permanent secretary from Malawi. A loud applause for him. We have Devende Gopal, permanent secretary from Mauritius. A round of applause for him. Thank you very much. The third one is Manuel Didea Malunga, permanent secretary from Mozambique. Thank you very much. The next one is Victor Domingos Kandemba, permanent secretary also from Mozambique. Thank you very much. The next one is Serge Balevi Minga, permanent secretary from Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. Thank you very much. The next one is Kaspa Munya, Permanent Secretary from Tanzania. Thank you very much. The next one is Edith Mwanje, Permanent Secretary from Uganda. Thank you very much. The next one is Joseph Masanyufu, another Permanent Secretary from Republic of Uganda. Thank you very much. Another one is William Alo Nwam. Nwango, Permanent Secretary from Nigeria. Thank you very much. The next one is Ibilola Kasun, Kasunmiu, Permanent Secretary also from Nigeria. Thank you very much. The next one is Amina Ahmed Warsama, Secretary General from the Republic of Djibouti. Thank you very much. The next one is Mustafa Kobele Keita, Secretary General from the Republic of Guinea. Applause, round of applause. Thank you very much. The next one is Andri Rasoa Na Naivo, Secretary General from Madagascar. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary General. Last but not least is Jennifer Omolo, Deputy Permanent Secretary from the United Republic of Tanzania. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, sir, allow me at this point to recognize the Kenya Committee that came together to put this event together. I'm just requesting them to just stand up for one minute, uh, led by Wanjau, uh, the Secretary for NRB, you with your team. Let's stand up one minute for Your Excellency. Let's give an applause. We are the team who ensure that this event was put together. Allow me, Ex Excellency, also finally to invite uh, Honorable Felix Jalango, MP for Langata, our host today, to make a few remarks, and then we can be able to proceed. Welcome, uh, Honorable Jalango. Okay, I'm told there's a small change in the, in the program. Jalango has... Uh, all right. Thank you very much, Excellency. At this point, allow me to invite uh, my Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Abraham Kindiki, to be able to run the rest of the program. Thank you very much. Welcome, uh, Moshimua Cabinet Secretary. Your Excellency, uh, President William Ruto, 
Excellencies and uh, distinguished guests and all visitors and delegates, uh, good morning. Excellency, with your permission, I request uh, to allow the governor of the city county of Nairobi to first come and uh, welcome us here. Otherwise, we might get into trouble. Welcome, uh, Johnson Sakaja is the governor of Nairobi City County. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Waziri Kindiki, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Cabinet Secretaries, Principal Secretaries, um, the Executive Director of um, ID for Africa, and all the delegates who are here today. Allow me to give you a warm welcome to the city of Nairobi, Karibu Nisana. Um, allow me to say a few things. One, you're in the right place. I don't think there'd be a better place to have this function, number one, than in Kenya. In 1984, one Kamuya Kimeu, along the banks of uh, the Nairokotome River, found the earliest fossil of humankind, called the Turkana boy. Meaning, all of you are coming home to find your identity before you look at gadgets of identity for Africa. So, where better to have this conversation than back at home? So, welcome home. Number two, Nairobi is the silicon savannah of the continent. Nairobi is a place that's a hotbed of innovation. Our young people have led the way and have you know, blazed the trail when it comes to technology. And so this is the right place for us to have the confluence of uh, digital solutions to identity. As a county government, we, have, we are, I think, the second on the continent to start a physical addressing and street naming uh, system that is on GIS. And I'm sure, because I've gone around and picked a lot of the brochures, a lot of the solutions, main, many of which are for national governments, also will make sense to us as subnational governments. As I've had the presentations before me and seen what is going on, I listened to His Excellency, our President, when he spoke to the Pan-African Parliament in South Africa. Identity is more than just documents and gadgets. Identity is who we are. The documents and the gadgets and the tools that we're talking about only give expression to that. But we must ask ourselves this today, as this new generation of leaders grapples with this. Are we just 1.4 billion people stuck within 30 kilometers square, or is there something that defines us as Africans? Once we know what that is, because identity gives us dignity, identity puts us at the right place on the global table, but we cannot claim that space if we don't know first who we are. First the identity as Africans, and then our identity as citizens of our nations. It's a very liberating idea, and I hope that we will move beyond the hardware and the software to the real questions around what Africa is, around what our nations represent, around what the imaginary lines drawn by the colonialists mean to us today. Are we embedding the separation or using those as bridges towards each other? Finally, enjoy Nairobi. Nairobi is the only city in the world where, just behind you, you will be enjoying animals in their most natural, unspoilt, untouched habitat with the skyline of the capital city. We have a vibrant nightlife, we have a vibrant economy, and more than that, very warm and endearing people. Thank you very much, and feel most welcome to Nairobi County. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellency, allow me to invite the exec executive chairman, the ID for Africa movement, His Excellency Dr. Joseph Atik, to come and make a few remarks. Thank you and welcome. Your, Ex Your Excellency President Ruto, esteemed ministers from Kenya, as well as state ministers from Niger, Ethiopia, Gabon, and DR Congo, distinguished guests and attendees, good morning. All protocols observed. On behalf of the ID for Africa movement, I'd like to sincerely thank you 
Your Excellency, for taking time from your busy schedule this morning to be with us. I also like to thank you for the assistance and facilitation that you provided us through all the Kenyan government agencies that are part of the local organizing committee for the ID for Africa 2023 AGM. In this regard, I'd like to specifically, specially recognize the Ministry of Interior and its Immigration and Citizenship Services for their phenomenal cooperation and support. Principal Secretary Ambassador Bitok, with the support of Cabinet Secretary Pro Professor Kindiki, personally led the organizing committee and were engaged in every step of the way. We really appreciate that kind of commitment. The Kenya Revenue Service, Revenue Authority, facilitated the customs procedure, which made it possible to bring into Kenya, for demonstration purposes, the latest equipment and innovations from around the world in the domain of digital identity. I also, I also like to recognize Cabinet Secretary of ICT, Mr. Owalo, for his participation, his spectacular participation yesterday, along with Ambassador Bitok, in a thought leadership policy panel at the opening yesterday that set the scene for the intense dialogue and discussions that followed. People are continuing to, to talk about that session. Together, Your Excellency, with your government, we have made history this week. And this is only just the beginning. It's clear that the exceptional cooperation that we received from your government is a reflection of your support of the digital identity agenda and our identity for all movement. So please accept my heartfelt and sincere gratitude. Your Excellency, I'd like to bring to your attention in closing a matter that has become the rallying cry for the Identity for All movement across Africa and the world, and that is Identity Day. I'd like to appeal to you to officially recognize 16 September as a National Day of Identity. Identity is the most valuable asset people have, yet there is no day commemorating or celebrating it. The choice of the date is very symbolic, since it pays homage to the UN Sustainable Development Goal 16.9, which calls for legal identity for all, including birth registration, by 2030. The commemorative day can be used to sensitize the population about the importance of having their identity, and it signals your government's commitment to empowering people through identity and to protecting their data and privacy. President Ruto, Your Excellency, Afri Africa is looking for Kenya's leadership in this important domain. I appeal to you to add 16 September as Identity Day on your identity agenda. Thank you for listening. Another round of applause for Executive Chairman. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, um, mine is uh, simple because I think uh, the setting for this uh, event was done yesterday and I want to pay homage to all the delegates who participated in yesterday's uh, discussions and engagements and in particular I want to recognize my colleague in the cabinet uh, Eliud Owalo, the cabinet secretary for ICT and the digital economy for a beautiful job that he did together with the other colleagues including my PS, the PS for immigration and citizen services. Please a round of applause for all those who made it um, a success yesterday. Your Excellency, allow me just to make two points. Uh, one is, uh, of course, I join in welcoming uh, all our friends who are coming into Kenya and Nairobi. And 
I am glad to learn that this forum is a forum to exchange ideas with one another as brothers and sisters from friendly countries, but also it's a forum to pick best practices globally so that Africa can move with the world at the same pace. Your Excellency, as uh, my colleague the PS has said, I, I don't want to repeat, we, we have an ID system in Kenya which is um, semi-automated. Part of it, there is a bit of automation, but quite minimal. Going forward, we are looking at uh, upgrading our current automated fingerprint identification system, AFIS, into an automated biometric identification system, which goes beyond the fingerprints and involves the iris and the uh, and the and, and, and the iris, the fingerprints, as also uh, as well as facial recognition. The other thing, Your Excellency, is that going forward, we are moving towards uh, an electronic ID with a machine-readable chip and QR code, and uh, eventually this should lead us to a digital ID system, which will allow web-based ID authentication. And in the long run, transit all that into a universal a personal identifier, a unique, sorry, a unique personal identifier, uh, which we are going to give all new bonds in Kenya, and uh, it becomes the, their ID when they attain the age of majority at 18. So, Your Excellency, I think we are on the right uh, uh, forum. This is a forum which will make us uh, move into the digital world and move Kenya's uh, registration of persons, Kenya's identity system to the next level. And we are very happy with the kind of cutting edge technology that have been demonstrated during the exhibition. I welcome everyone and I look forward to learning and picking ideas which we can integrate uh, as, 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 as the people of Kenya as we move towards um, modernizing our ID uh, system. Your Excellency, allow me before I invite you to recognize uh, the ministers who are present by just reading out their names uh, so that they can be acknowledged. Um, Honorable Huria Ali Mahdi is the State Minister for Innovation and Technology from the Federal Republic of Ethiopia. We have uh, Tesfaye Daba Wachkira, who is the Cabinet Affairs State Minister from the Republic, again, of Ethiopia, the Federal Republic of Ethiopia. The Honorable Yusuf Masauni is the Minister for Home Affairs of uh, the United Republic of Tanzania. The Honorable Mamadou Adamu Soleil is the Interior Minister of the Republic of Niger. The Honorable Hamed Mualim Fiki Hamed is the Interior Minister of the Republic, the Federal Republic of Somalia. The Honorable Tegu Setiabudi is the Deputy Minister for the Ministry of Home Affairs from the Republic of Indonesia. And of course, my brother Eliud is here, the Minister for ICT and the Digital Economy of the Republic of Kenya. At this juncture, I request that we be all upstanding as we invite His Excellency, President of the Republic of Kenya, William Ruto, to address us. Welcome, Your Excellency. Good morning, everybody, and let's take our seats. Thank you very much. Honorable ministers present, principal secretaries, senior government officials, distinguished participants, good morning. And welcome to 
Let me join uh, the governor of Nairobi in welcoming all of you to Kenya. I know the uh, governor has uh, given you some information. He has welcomed you home. Let me underscore that uh, as a scientist myself, scientific information including data have verified that the earliest remains of man or our friends from Europe, our friends from um, the Americas and Asia and the rest of the continent of Africa, welcome home. Uh, this is where the human journey began. And if for any reason you feel so much at home that you are tempted to stay behind, please feel free because uh, this is home. Secondly, the governor of Nairobi has also told you that um, this is the only uh, city where the national park with all the wild animals is 10 minutes drive from your hotel room. Uh, let me just uh, maybe add to the information that he has given that sometimes the lions and the other wild animals, sometimes they break off from the fence. <laughs> so if you meet a lion on the street, please be careful because it is not uh, domesticated, it is wild. Um, but let me say on behalf of the government and people of Kenya, I wish to acknowledge the privilege it is for us to host the 7th ID Africa General Meeting, a conference with tremendous implications for effective and inclusive governance efficient provision of public services based on accurate population, citizen data, and the advancement of fundamental rights and social justice. A gathering of eminent experts in the field of identity management drawn from African governments, international development, and humanitarian agencies, as well as global leaders in digital identity solutions. This is an event of monumental significance by all accounts. And I am Im immensely delighted to be here. And on behalf of the people of Kenya, I extend a warm welcome to all our visitors from Africa and the rest of the world. Please do feel at home and endeavor to find the time to experience our magnificent country and its delightful attractions that will make for a memorable stay including what uh, Governor Sakaja said. This conference offers a unique forum for productive interactions among African national identity management agencies, as well as potential transformative exchanges between these agencies and global experts from the identity and biometrics industry. I have been impressed by the latest identity management innovations on display, and I believe that they constitute a significant indicator of this exposition's transformative potential. We consider sound identity management to be essential to the integrity of the state because we recognize its immediate implication for the effective management of our democracy, society, and the management of our economy as well. Good governance entails effective administration and efficient management of the economy by a legitimate government authorized through democratic elections. Accurate information about the population resident within our territory is absolutely indispensable. To validly constitute government, we need an accurate idea of how many voters, how many people, how have they voted, so that 
we can effectively deliver public services and make it possible for citizens to explore opportunities and also deliver public goods. The government also needs accurate information on essential attributes of citizens and other residents of a country in order to provide them with services and otherwise allocate resources for their benefit with a measure of efficiency and accuracy. Moreover, the provision of public services also depends on the deployment of personnel and associated resources throughout the country in such a manner that the purposes and objectives of government are realized to the utmost. Transactional efficiency in the provision of public as well as private goods and services depends on a capacity to establish the identity of agents and quickly and accurately in that matter. In recognition of these imperatives, Kenya has established a strong track record of sound identity management practices anchored on a national population register that is underpinned by the maintenance of a shared fingerprint biometric system. The register captures the data of adult citizens, residents of national or foreign nationals, refugees, as well as other protected persons. Aside from this, Kenya also maintains a robust civil and vital statistics registration system. The government has instituted measures to ensure 100% registration of births and services and births and deaths by 2026. Aside from the overarching purposes of national identity management system, Kenya has specifically objectives, has specific objectives for pursuing this critical undertaking. Article 12 of our constitution sets out the entitlement of every citizen to rights, privileges, and benefits of citizenship, and to a Kenyan passport, and any document of registration or identification issued by the state to all our citizens. The state is therefore committed by implication to the full implementation of these clear constitutional provisions without any question or delay or any other excuse. In addition, these constitutional imperatives is aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and more specifically SDG 16.9 under peace, justice and strong institutions to provide legal identity for all, including free birth registration. And I am very happy I was particularly impressed and fascinated by the presentation of Colin Howell, a great uh, a professional. And his journey across our continent and what he has, the kind of expertise he has been able to bring to bear on our identity infrastructure, including the Kenyan one. And I want to um, uh, say just two things. Even as you go through this uh, very important conversation, and as you bring our professionals, experts, scientists, designers into this space so that we can chart the way into the future together, including all the expertise that come and have worked with us. I want you to pay special attention to two fundamental things. Number one, we are investing as a continent and specifically as a country about 30% of all our resources in education, training, and research. And because of that huge investment, we are developing a human capital. And about 30 million Africans, 
joined the labor market after undergoing various levels of education. I would ask that even as we develop the expertise around this field, even as we work with professionals and experts and designers, we have millions of young people, talented, tech savvy in our continent that can be trained, that can work with experts from the rest of the globe. And in a very short time, we should be able to not only do what Colin Howell is doing by Africans in Africa, but we can also begin the journey to export that talent to other parts of the world. <laughs> what I'm saying is, and uh, I like what Colin said, he said he's looking forward to working with us, even to working with Kenya on our new passport and our new identity uh, infrastructure. The only caveat I will give to him is that it will be possible for us to work with you only if you are willing to work with our young people, our experts, our designers, so that we can be able to pass on the experience that is developing, the scientific knowledge that is developing, so that the young people we are developing in our continent can also contribute their talent, their ideas, and their suggestions into the, ID, uh, the identification infrastructure of the future. I am a great believer that any scientist, any designer, any professional, any leader, is judged not just by what they accomplish, but by the mentorship they do to the next generation. You must position yourself as part of your success to develop the next generation of designers, the next generation of professionals. And I say so very passionately because Africa is the youngest continent with a mean age of about 20. And with technology, the young people that come out of school, I, my estimate at the moment is about 30 million every year, they have what it takes to provide the human capital, the labor of the future, the designers of the future, the scientists of the future, just with a little bit of working together and building the necessary ecosystem that will tap into uh, this talent. I want to ask the policymakers who are here, ministers, principal secretaries, that you must keep an eye, not just on what is available now, who we can work with now, but we must also keep an eye on making sure that we tap into the millions of the young people in our continent to give them the opportunity to contribute their talent and expertise going into the future. I think it will be the greatest appreciation for those who have assisted us to come this far that we can give back and get young designers from Africa to help design IDs and identification documents in Europe, America, Asia, and all the other places that have been very kind to us to assist us in what we have been doing. I am proud of the progress we have made towards the achievement of this ambition, including notably granting of Kenyan citizenship to members of various communities which have lived in our country as stateless persons since independence. We have people from Mozambique whom we have 
uh, granted Kenyan citizenship. We have people from Pemba, whom we have had uh, to grant them uh, citizenship. We have other communities that we are considering because we believe the globe is continuously getting integrated. We are even working with the, the UN agencies to see some of our refugees who can then be considered for citizenship uh, in Kenya because we appreciate that continuously we are living in a global village and all of us must be able to work together towards a homogeneous uh, society. Um, our identity management system is the bedrock on which Kenya's financial, revenue collection, telco, social security, universal health, and other voter registration systems are built. Consider the country's celebrated leadership in the mobile phone penetration and mobile money penetration ecosystem. These achievements, including the globally acclaimed M-Pesa, stand upon the robust foundation of our national identity management system and the whole uh, ecosystem around technology. We have embarked on a national program to digitize government records and information and automate public service provision to enable Kenyans access government services from the comfort of their homes using their devices. The aim is to significantly cut down transaction costs and minimize opportunities for corruption by eliminating unnecessary bureaucracy and also increase transparency in government and efficiency in the provision of government service. Over the past year, we have increased the number of services available We have increased the number of services available on the digital platform from 320 to 5,000 and intend to cover all services that government of Kenya provides. And I think we have identified close to 7,000 services. All of them should be available on a digital platform by the end of this year so that citizens from the comfort of their homes or their offices can interact with government, can access government services in an efficient, effective, timely manner without unnecessary bureaucracy. Because of this ambition, Kenya is among the earliest of its continent's peers to establish a policy framework for data protection, which includes comprehensive legislation and regulations to safeguard privacy and personal data. I know it's a big concern. People don't, don't want their medical records. They do not want their personal data to be abused or to be used by people who are unauthorized. And that is the reason why we have a comprehensive data protection um, uh, legislation that provides security for the use of data that is available on the digital platform for people who are only authorized to access that information. And I, I saw our Director General of uh, Data, uh, she's here, a very efficient lady, uh, but she's also tough. I, I sometimes find people complaining that she has taken uh, steps against them. Continue doing the good job, Madam. You have my support. With a sound policy ecosystem in place, we are ready to execute our leap into a brave new world and become a fully fledged digital country and economy. Our identity registration and management journey, together with all the experiences and achievements along the way, demonstrate that properly considered and rationally executed identity management solutions can and do catalyze a country's socio-political and economic transformation, thereby empowering people to exercise their rights, access services, participate in affairs of their nation, perform their obligations, 
and pursue opportunities that are available in their countries. This is how sustainable development happens. Let me mention one more thing, that as we think about what I have said, as the professionals think about our young people, you must also think about the shared prosperity, that this identity uh, journey must not erect barriers and roadblocks. It must just serve the good purpose of identity for ease of movement so that using agile technology and identity um, systems, we can be able to make it much more easy for people to travel, for people to cross borders, because they are easily identifiable and we can easily separate the good guys from the bad guys. That way, and I am talking to those of us from our continent, we should be able to eliminate the barriers that currently impede our ability to work together, to trade together, to invest together. We all know that the level of intra-Africa trade has been, has been impeded by our inability to work together. As you work on these digital identity management systems, you must be sensitive to the fact that Africa is lagging behind in matters of trade with the, between ourselves. Our identity ecosystem must facilitate us to actualize the tenets and the principles of the Africa continental free trade area that provides us an opportunity to trade, to increase intra-Africa trade from currently less than 10% to where Europe and the rest of Asia and the Americas are around 50-60% we can be able to unlock huge potential in our economies by facilitating the movement of people, goods and services in our continent and be able to unlock the great potential that exists in our continent. It will also give us the opportunity to balance trade between our continent and the rest of, this, of the continents. It will also enable us to make a contribution to world trade and commerce and, um, uh, and, and business. Today, we are contributing less than 3% of world trade. It's not that we do not have tradable goods. It is not that we do not have the men and women to do it. It is because we are not working in concert. We are not working with synergy. And hopefully the professionals who are here from our continent will want to appreciate that going into the future, we must make the world better by making our contribution. We have 17% of the population as we talk, yet we contribute only 3% of world trade. We must up our game, and hopefully those of us who are here can begin to talk together and work together, work in concert, work in uh, synergy, so that we can unlock the potential that exists in our continent and also be able to meaningfully contribute to the progress and the prosperity of the world by making our contribution to world trade, world commerce, and world enterprise. Our path into a digital economy will require us to proceed beyond our considerable achievements in identity management in order to transition from unique identity registration into a fully functional and secure national digital identity management system. A trusted, all-inclusive uh, digital identity system is indispensable in digital governance. This conference, therefore, 
is quite timely insofar as it takes place while the government is deliberating the implementation of a civil registration and vital statistics system that meets the imperatives of a new digital era. The new system must be able to assign unique personal identification numbers at birth to all persons born in Kenya, upgrade the current national identity card into a national digital identity management system, and adopt the most sophisticated advanced passenger information solution to address the entry and exit of our borders and ports. I challenge all participants, especially identity management practitioners from Africa, to collaborate with Kenyan colleagues in sharing their experience, strengthening thought leadership, and exploring possible innovations to achieve greater integrity and efficiency in this sector. I also encourage industry experts to generously share their insights and apply their unique expertise in digital public infrastructure in order to generate solutions that will enhance the entrenchment of data sovereignty both in Kenya and throughout Africa as we learn from best practice across the globe. Data privacy for registered persons is an essential component of our public mandate, and we must take every possible measure to safeguard it at all times. We operate in an environment of escalating resource constraints, and yet, at the same time, we cannot postpone or downgrade our identity management endeavors. Our development partners, therefore, have an opportunity to explore possible areas of collaboration with our state departments for immigration and citizen services to support our identity management programs. And I want to say here that uh, we're looking at all, all options when it comes, when we are discussing resource constraints, among them public-private partnerships, joint ventures, and other interventions that will bring the private sector to provide public service in a manner that is affordable and in a manner where there is shared outcomes, shared profits, and bringing the expertise and professionalism of the private sector into the delivery of public goods and services. I also want to address myself to one or two other uh, issues that could come in the way of the delivery of what we are discussing in this meeting. Climate change is a huge component of, of what influences the availability the deployment of public goods and services. When governments have to divert resources that are meant for the delivery of public goods, including education, including water, including health, and sometimes including uh, the subject of a digital ecosystem, to be able to provide for the vagaries of what climate change has visited on us. We need to have a conversation. And I want to say, those of us from the continent of Africa, we want to have a candid conversation on how we can leverage on the huge resources we have, especially energy resources, from wind, from solar, from hydro, from geothermal, to be able to sort out the big question of energy that is influencing world development. Africa can become a critical player in sorting out the challenge of climate change. We need to listen to what we are saying, and we want not a finger pointing, not a blame game, we want a win-win outcome out of this conversation. We want, as a continent, 
to bring the assets that we have, the energy resources that we have. We want others to come with technology, to come with investment, and have a conversation as to how we can not only deliver clean, green energy in the African continent, but we can also help other continents to be able to overcome their challenges of fossil fuel energy by exporting some of our resources through uh, hydrogen uh, technology to other parts of the world and sort out the big question of climate change using climate financing, climate investment. Um, uh, two days, a week ago, I was discussing with the Prime Minister of Singapore how Kenya can assist Singapore in selling them some of our carbon credits to manage their own situation. This is the kind of discussion we want to have so that we can have a win-win because we have only one globe to share. It is not the North versus the South. It is not Africa versus other continents. We have only one globe for all of us to share. We are in it together. Either we are sinking together or we are floating together. And I think I choose we float together. Um, I also want to, to tell our good friends who are partners with us, we appreciate the investment and the opportunity to work with uh, others in our continent. And it is the, it's the right thing to do. It's also good for us to know that Africa is the continent of the future. By 2050, a quarter of the world's population will be living in Africa. We will have developed a very big market. It is the youngest continent with a GDP of 3.5 trillion. We are currently consolidating as African leaders, we are consolidating Africa into a single market. In fact, through the Africa continental free trade area, Africa will be the largest single market by 2050 in the world. Any business person, any entrepreneur, any uh, technology provider must know where the future is for you to begin to make the necessary investments and to begin to have the necessary network for you to have uh, yourself properly positioned in the continent of the future. And we will be open for business and we are looking for a win-win uh, uh, formula that will harness all our potentials, build on the successes, build on best practice and be able to support not just our continent, but to support uh, humanity in making sure that we have a secure, we have um, a, a, a prosperous uh, globe for us, for all of us to share. Finally, let me mention one more thing, because I have the benefit of many African leaders in this uh, room. Uh, that we are also having a conversation about an ecosystem that is going to fairly give everybody an opportunity to be their best. We will be discussing in Paris shortly the international financial system and a new deal that will bring lenders and borrowers together because the lender cannot do without the, the borrower, and the borrower cannot do without the lender. But there must be a mutual win-win outcome for it to be sustainable. That's the conversation we will be having to discuss a new international financial system that gives opportunity for every part of the world at the moment our very considered view is the current international financial system is rigged against some, where other sovereigns access international financial resources at less than 1%, others access with more than 
when you are trying to deliver public goods, you cannot do it in a system where one pays 100 times more than the other. And we are not asking for a financial system that favors anybody. We are asking for a fair one that gives everybody a chance. <laughs> this is the conversation we are going to have, and I am very happy that uh, the people who will work with us, even as you think about identity, you must also know that we share one globe and we are all on the same side. Once more, I affirm my profound delight at being able to participate in this timely, appropriate, and fundamentally transformational conference. I wish you fruitful deliberations and look forward to the outcomes of your deliberations in due course to share in Kenya, in our continent, and globally so that we can have a much more progressive home for all of us. Thank you very much and God bless you. Come on, one more round of applause for His Excellency. Asante sana mweshimi wa rais kwa hiyo hotuba. And we only have two.